So blood exerts pressure against the walls of blood vessels, and this hydrostatic pressure is greatest in the arteries than it is in the veins. As the heart contracts during ventricular systole, blood pressure is maintained, forcing blood from the heart through arteries and arterioles to capillaries, where exchange of substances takes place. Here I have my capillary and the blood will flow through the arterial end of the capillary, which has a pressure of about 35 milligrams of mercury. So there's a net outward pressure. And this capillary hydrostatic pressure, which is exerted upon the walls of the capillary bed, is responsible for forcing out solutes and fluids, such as oxygen, molecules of water, glucose, amino acids, ions. However, red blood cells and larger proteins stay in the capillary. They are too big to be forced through the thin walls. So blood flow continues through the venous end of the capillary, which has a lower pressure of approximately 25 milligrams of mercury. So now there is a net inward pressure. This is due to osmotic pressure. The remaining proteins in the capillary have lowered the water potential, and therefore water and some waste products will be reabsorbed. So we can see cells which are surrounded by the capillaries and the hydrostatic pressure forces solutes out into the surrounding environment and into some of those cells. They will absorb some of the nutrients. We can also see the lymphatic system here too. So surrounding the cells, surrounding the lymphatic system, surrounding the capillaries, we have our tissue fluid. And this tissue fluid is composed of the water and the solutes that are being forced out of the capillary beds. Now, as the pressure changes at the venous end of the capillary, due to the larger proteins that remain in there, the osmotic pressure has changed. So the water potential has changed, which means water and waste products, carbon dioxide, water, other wastes, will be reabsorbed. In fact, about 90% of leaked fluid is reabsorbed here due to that water potential difference, which means, of course, about 10% of leaked fluid is collected by the lymphatic system. So the hydrostatic pressure forces molecules, forces these solutes out into the surrounding environment and is absorbed into some of those cells for nutri nutritional value and is collected by the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is responsible for draining this fluid back to the subclavian vein where the fluid is returned to the cardiovascular system. So remember, capillaries are thin, and the endothelial cells are leaky, which means under the higher hydrostatic pressure of the arterial end of the capillary, fluid is forced out, so water, small solutes such as ions and glucose and urea, are small enough to be forced through these leaky capillaries, forming this tissue fluid. Red blood cells and larger proteins and larger solutes remain in the capillary, lowering the water potential, allowing water and fluid to be reabsorbed. And that is essentially how tissue fluid is formed. Be sure to revise the lessons on osmosis and osmotic pressures, as they often ask questions regarding osmosis, pressure differences in exams regarding the formation of this tissue fluid.